levels are in the atmosphere and what the ozone destruction capabilities are. The colored ones are some ground-based measurements and satellite-based measurements, but they all show similar things. That as, as we got the increasing levels of chlorine up to 2020, we went down in the amount of ozone. Now we started to level off and come back a little bit. So this is what we call the recovery. So we've gone down as the chlorine kept rising. After 2000, it started coming back down, but slowly it's not going back down as quickly as it went up. So we've got this leveling off here. I've got even a more uh, colorful chart here. Um, so you can get my presentation. They're, they'll be posting these, They're, they'll be available. And this one I've got, uh, I call, used to call it a thousand words, but um, it's got a slide after that has all, many of the words I'm going to say now. I won't be saying all of them. So what we see here is an anomaly plot of total column ozone. How much ozone is in the atmosphere at different latitudes from 80 south to 80 north over time from 1980 to 2020. And these are the anomaly plots. We've taken out a seasonal cycle and seen what the difference is. And they're 25% low in some places, down here where there's ozone holes going on, up to 20, 15% high and early in the record before we saw the ozone destruction. So we can see we go from these colors that are positive, ozone's destroyed, we get low, and then we sort of start to come back up here at the end. You can also see that there's, there's a lot of up and downs. So the ozone destruction is also dependent on, this, on the temperature of the atmosphere, and there's more destruction sometimes a year than other. It's also that the equator, there's not as much destruction. It's more boring place, although there are some downs, but those are from rising and falling of the atmosphere associated with quasi-biennial oscillation. We can see that some of the biggest drops are like this one here. This was after the eruption of Mount Pinatubo to put a whole bunch of sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere. And that process of destruction went on there. This is a satellite record. Some months we don't have a satellite record. There's black lines here. Some months the polar orbiting satellite had drifted, so its coverage in the southern hemisphere, sunlit Earth, wasn't as good. There's a lot of things going on here. Um, I'll leave it there for, for this, this plot. Um, this is our new instrument. It's got the total column measurement that I talked about. This is showing an ozone hole in the, in the purples here. Values below 220 Dobson units are considered to be ozone hole conditions. We hadn't seen them done in the Antarctic before this happened. This is the South Pole here. This is a curtain plot of that limb profiler instrument. It shows the profile, the vertical profile with an ozone density here. This is showing a slice through it. So this dashed line is a slice outside the ozone hole. We can see that we've got this big jump up here. This is why we talk about an ozone layer because it really is the case that most of the ozone is up in the stratosphere in this layer. And then we see if we look inside the ozone hole, ozone has been destroyed. We're missing ozone here. We've got this very low amount here where the ozone has been destroyed by this chemistry that goes on in the ozone hole. So we've seen a lot of different things here about the way ozone is destroyed, um, just very briefly. So um, I want to point out that uh, this work, this is an ozone hole from 2018. It's a time lapse of it. And again, the purples will form there as we get to lower values. So we, we've got physics going, the physics that goes on. We've got chemistry that goes on. In order to do these things, we need engineers to make instruments. We need engineers to fly the satellites and figure out what's going on. We need an awful lot of computer scientists. We've got databases. We've got information flowing. We want to get information out to the public. We've got all this going on. We've got applied mathematicians working on the algorithms that take the radiance that comes from the Earth and turn it into something useful and information about the ozone in the atmosphere. Uh, we've got statisticians looking at the trends over time. So. If there's anybody who didn't cover in here, raise your hand and say what your major is. So you've got atmospheric dynamics going on. You've got meteorology going on, moving the ozone around. Okay, so you're all covered. So there's, there's something going on in here that, that, that all of you can relate to. And again, um, I'll stop there. Thanks, Eric. Very much. If you want a presentation. Uh, we have time for some questions if people have. I'll just point out the, um, the reason why we don't have a northern hemisphere ozone hole. So the southern hemisphere, there's not a lot of, of mountains at the, there is a lot of a mountainous area in the, in, above the pole itself in Antarctica, 
but there's not there's not as much wave activity in the southern hemisphere. We get a stabler polar vortex that gets colder temperatures. The ozone destruction that goes on in, in the ozone hole occurs on polar stratospheric clouds, so PSCs. You need very cold temperatures to form those. We do sometimes see them forming, actually. And if we look here in this red circle, there's some purples up here. And this was when we had what was called a, a mini hole in the northern hemisphere, where there was some isolated air masses that got very cold and did have the polar stratospheric clouds form. And we did see the same chemistry going on in the atmosphere, the same destruction of ozone. Yes. Uh, so I, I know obviously there are a lot of factors, but in your uh, uh, you know estimation, when do you think the ozone layer might theoretically be completely? Yeah. So the, the models actually show us starting to come back. So these, this gray is the model. So whoops. this gray is model. So you can see the models don't even come all the way back up. And there's some very open questions about the interaction between climate change in, in the ozone layer. Um, there's some people that, that, that you know, their, their, their models show we might come up higher when we finally get climate change doing what it might do if we don't do much about it. There's others that show that we never come back all the way, even if, even if we get rid of the chlorine back down to that one. So, um, and there are obviously a lot of dynamical things. I mean, none of these curves just follow the models. There's year-to-year -year variations that are very effective. Um, and we have, um, Oh, it's not following me anymore. Here we go. So within this thing, I've got the, I've got the ozone hole year to year, showing it. And we can see at the beginning there wasn't ozone holes, and we started having them. And then here we are coming up with the last eighteen years. We still have ozone holes. So again, we started to come down, but they can explain the ozone hole by saying how much chlorine is in the stratosphere above Antarctica. What was the, what was the isolation? What was the cold temperatures? What was the area of PSCs that were formed? So we're able to relate these things and use a model to get the year-to-year -year variation, including the dynamics that go on. The case you showed in the Northern Hemisphere, was it looked like 2020, I'm not sure. Uh, was that associated with that? We had an unusually strong polar Yeah, so, um, you know, there's, 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 there's been some fairly, uh, where's, where is it? Uh, 2003, I think we're back. Northern Hemisphere. So, Um, if you look at the very lowest one there, that year the, the polar vortex above Antarctica broke up very early. Um, you know, it was a very wimpy year, 2002. If you do 2002 ozone hole, you'll see people writing papers discussing what dynamics went on. And then you see other people who don't know what they're talking about saying, oh, good, we aren't going to have ozone holes anymore. So, um, not very many of those in journals. Okay. Okay, hey, thank you. Thank you.